Okay. Okay. Uh, testing, testing. We'll get into a little bit of machine learning and uh, Proving Ground is really the site. Uh, they talk about Lunchbox ML and I'll show you how to use one of the nodes and then I'll throw it into one of my extrusion scripts. So here it is in pretty interesting form. It's very interchangeable uh, and uh, you can swap that out, do whatever you want with it, have fun with it on the inside or the outside, balloon it out, uh, but your controlling curves with uh, a sense of machine learning from a cluster of points. And if I showed everything, you'd, you'd get a sense of what was happening. That's quite a mess. So we're just going to grab that visibility off. And we're going to ditch the script and build it from scratch. So let's do it. And uh, we've got another item in here for some reason. Uh, I guess I baked that. Uh, we'll just uh, delete that. So let's start with uh, Shaded and jump in here and see how we're going to end up building. I've got it up on another page. I think so. Oh. No, just give me a second. You can entertain yourselves for a minute. I've got to go into Grasshopper, grab my screenshot files. I think I tucked them away here. And I have them in, oh, Lunchbox. Sorry about this delay. Um, there we go. Let's load them up. All right. So initially, uh, first script, you're going to want to uh, definitely bring in your bifocals tool um, right here. And I'll make that a little bigger so you can see what's going on. And what I'm going to create are two things. First thing I'm going to create, and I usually think, I think a little forward, a little backwards, just populate a 3D geometry. And in doing so, I'm going to want to grab a center box. If I grab a center box and I throw that through a nice range of, let's say, 8 uh, in the XYZ, I have a nice little box here. And the base will keep it 0, 0, which is fine. And we'll pair that data and information with a series component and I'll go into my sets sequence series pop it in here and one thing I'm going to do with my series is I'm going to graph the data as it comes out my steps going to be set to zero so I'll leave it my numbers will be low let's say 1.6 which will take it up to 10 my steps and my count I'm going to keep it as the same count as my box and so I've got a bunch of data I've got populated geometries in here they're contained, and you'll see what I'm actually trying to do with this as I go. Um, so immediately, uh, because I don't want to write and script uh, machine learning code, um, because I just don't want to, I'm going to look for a sequential minimal optimization regression. And that means go to, not Dodo, uh, what is machine lear uh, what is my machine learning under? I can't remember. Oh my gosh, where did I hide it away? Um, I don't know. So I'm just going to type in sequential, sequential, uh, optimization, regression. Maybe if I type in regression, I'll find it. Uh, there it is. Uh, it's one of these regressions, but at least if I pull this out, I can go here and see that I'm over here on L. Oh, of course, Lunchbox. And here are your machine learning uh, algorithms. So I guess the one I want is a sequential... Oh my gosh, which one is it? Uh, it is maybe uh, this one, nonlinear regression. That's what it is. It's nonlinear regression. So what you're going to need from here is you're going to need some. Uh, you're going to need some test data, and that's why we grafted this. That's my test data. I hit the wrong joiner, and there it is. My training inputs are going to be these points. So I am actually going to deconstruct those points to get at some of the data in there. So throw on my points here. And now I can step over here and I'm going to graph my X as well. So I've grafted this one. I've grafted this one. These are going to be my inputs, uh, training inputs. My outputs are going to be Y. And now my, now my uh, code is up and running. This defaults to 2. This one defaults to 100. This one defaults to 5. So that should give you a sense. Now seed, you could always just... Put in anything you want and seed it any way you want. But, uh, and slide that around in time and get some different variations. I actually wasn't using that in my code. The sigma I'm going to set to a 3 count. Um, and the complexity I'm going to set to a 22 count. So that'll give me a range up to the 100. So I can play off of that. So basically this is running and this will give me results, which is numbers. It will give me scores and it will give me errors. So what I'm going to end up doing, and here's where I got a little inventive with it, was I said I wanted to remake those points. So I've got to go back in and construct my points. And I want to flatten my X data 
and I want to flatten my Z data because it's going to come in as uh, as a as a uh, list, and so I need to flatten that when it comes in. I'm also going to add uh, one here to my x coordinate to step it out to the side so I can do a nice little revolve. And this is just kind of geometric understanding I understand. So quote one will give me an added one. I can add that to here and that will step it aside in the x direction. You start to see that's moving a little bit away from uh, starting really right dead center. And then I need my, actually, I want to bring this into my y data and I want my tree, I want my sequence data to come into my Z. And so now you've got a nice shape. That's a much better shape to think of a, as a profile that steps away from the XYZ center. And you'll see what I can end up doing with that very quickly because I always suggest visualizing either through nerves or through curves. That is a very nice profile curve. And that's the one that you want to get a handle on. So when you start changing these, you can see that curve really has some nice manipulation as it tries to sort itself out through those points. And once I have data, then I have points. Once I have points, then I have curves. And once I have curves, then I'm just going to do a revolve and get myself a surface. We'll do a solid. And we'll make things solid in a little bit of time. So we're going to take that in and do a revolve. But we need something to revolve it to. So the axis I'm going to revolve to is pretty simple. It would just be the uh, z uh, vector. Uh, but the z vector is not an axis. It's a vector. So you've got to go to your curves. Uh, generate a, a line start direction length. Uh, the start can just default to the point, 0, 0, 0, and the length really doesn't matter what the length is. It can be minuscule. It doesn't even need to be in there. But basically, there's your revolve. And you start to see your object. So if I click off of here, there's a nice little revolved object. Now, there's no base on it. If I went here, it's hollow right through. So I've got to do some fixing up. But I've succeeded in making a surface. And I'm very happy with that. Now, one thing I wasn't doing was seeding this differently and seeing if it did anything. I actually wasn't doing anything, the random seed, so I'm just going to leave it off. So here we go. We've got a surface, and we'll go into the second half of the script. And I think I can finish it off because I'm pretty good at doing this preview off. We've got our surface, and let's take it into how we finish these scripts. And this is very easy. Um, I've got a surface. I am going to... Uh, bring that surface in, and I probably will reparametize it. So I'm going to bring it out as a surface, and I'm going to reparametize this surface to play with. I could take this one off. I've got my surface there. Now, what will I do with it? Well, you're dealing in surfaces now that are going to solid, so let's debrep it. Let's uh, divide up our surface like I usually do. Uh, divide surface, uh, which will be my uh, faces which is only one face. I am going to take that to account 37. And I'm not sure why that didn't work. 37 count. I can take that in the UMV direction to really get some really nice details. And there it is. So I've got a lot of points on there. Now, where do I end up wanting to move this point? I'll show you right here. Um, I will have to take that data and move it. And I've done this. And I'm actually watching a script. And I probably shouldn't be. Uh, my motion, I'm going to move it to, will be the normals. So they jump out a little bit, and actually they jump up quite a bit. Uh, so that's very interesting, maybe because my scale is so big right now. The points are then going to be remade, but I need to flatten those points so I can actually make a surface from them. So I go back into surface and say surface from points. And now I'm going to need that U count. But with that U count, I've got to go into my maths, do a little addition add a count of quote one to it otherwise i won't get the right setting and i can grab my uv count type it in here and i should be fine for another surface so i should have this surface um so this surface and this surface and you can just see that without uh these points on there so you got those two now how are you going to flatten this out how are you going to cap it well i have to cap both of them at the bottom so what i'm going to do with this one is i'm going to grab a Debrep. I've already debrepped this one back here, right here. So I'm going to grab a list item. I guess I'll leave that on so you can see everything. I'm going to go into my uh, watch my count. I'm going to grab my list item of my faces, uh, actually my edges, and it's going to default to that nice little rim at the bottom, which is basically what I want. And once I get that one, that's fairly simple. That's uh, that's the bottom of it, and I don't need that right now. I'm wondering when I actually. Oh, I pulled it out of here. 
Um, I pulled the cap out, and I don't know if I capped the inside. I did. I capped the bottom, and then I extruded the bottom, which should be a good answer to it. It might cause a little problem, but let me just think about that. This one I'm going to get into another area. This one I'm going to get into, I hope I don't run out of time, surfaces here as list item. And I'm actually going to put a number two count on these because I want to come high on these. I want to go to the tops on both of these ones. And I'll show you how I'll cap the top, which is actually more tricky than just sealing the bottom. So I got that count and that count um, as a list index. Now this one has not been deprepped yet, so that's an issue. I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got to throw my deep rep in there. I've got to grab my edges in there. And now I can grab that edge and that edge. And whenever I see two curves that aren't coplanar, um, what I'll do is I'll take them into a curve tool and I'll throw a divide on them. And you can throw on as many of these as you want. But once you throw a divide curve on here and divide curve on here, you've got two points that you can throw into lines. And once you've got lines, you've got V lines and you've got U lines. And when you have that, you've got network surfaces. And I love this uh, network surface that you actually grab this point and this point for your U lines and these ones for your V lines, but you do have to flatten everything for that uh, to actually work. And we should be coming up okay with that. Let me see, I've got my lines uh, and I merged, ah, I merged my uh, divided surface, whereas I messed up because I'm just watching the time and it feels crushed for time and I shouldn't be doing it. I should be taking my items here and using these as my U lines. And there we go. We've got a very nice surface in there that joins between them. It's a wonderful way to, to really lock things together and pat without patching or doing anything too fancy. Um, what I'm going to do is get into my merge tool and say, okay, I've got that. I've got going back to this surface. I've got that one and going back to this surface. I just have to make sure I grab my, the right faces. You could grab this surface here. It would be fine as well. Um, grab this surface and pop it in there. And we're nearly done with everything, but we have not capped the bottom. So the only thing I'm going to do is go back in here to edges. I'm going to grab another list item right here. Um, and I'm going to, I don't need the two count on that. I can just take that and make that uh, zero because that's, that's the, uh, that's the actual ring at the bottom that I want. And I can throw in a surface on that one. And this may or may not, where I may have grabbed the top or the bottom, but once I have a surface, I can do a simple extrude, which everybody knows. And this is what most people are common. And a lot of people leave this for uh, uh, in Rhino, but I don't like to do anything in Rhino, actually. And, uh, and then Z vector reversed to a negative, and we can do a one count on it. I think we've got a pretty good base. Now that base can be brought in along those surfaces and get a nice little cup. And there it is. We made it in 13 minutes. There it is. Fully finished. Throw it into a little render. Or you can throw it into artistic if you want to see some shadow. And it kind of looks like a transparent, but it's not. So if we bake that, you'd see exactly what's going on here. There we go. Takes a second. And throw that one into render. And there you go. Got a nice little form. And you even get the hole all the way down through the middle of the bottom. So you can have some mystery liquid down in there. So whatever you want. It'd be like Elvis's head. You just unscrew his head. And drink like a vampire. All right. That's it. I think we've got it. Um, have I missed anything? I don't think so. The only thing you really want to do at this point is throw on everything and then have fun with your uh, two sliders here. I think these are the ones to control it. These two are fun to play with. That one you can play with as a step count, even though I haven't done that. But you can see the effects of that step to bake in another geometry. Ooh, I wasn't playing with that step last time I showed it. And we can take off all this nonsense here. Uh, preview off. We'll take that other bake. Let's grab this one. And since we've got it not grouped, let's pull that cup aside. And then let's take this one and throw in another bake. Layer one, give it a little red, join things together. And I think we're pretty good to go. Uh, we'll throw it back in our artistic because that's always fun. There's two nice little vessels one blue, one orange, and one baked. Nicely joined. And there you go. You're starting to make some really awesome stuff. 15 minute mark. And it's neural networks playing with uh, curves and kind of deciding how smooth you want to make the data. Now that data and those points could be based on Excel files tied to your finances for the month. They can be tied to your, your temperature. Uh, like now you can have some really good times with all this stuff. And actually I hadn't been playing with that one so much, but I think that's really the slider you want to play with to get these in different forms. Anyway, we're about done. I'm going to bake that last one and just save it as a file. We've run out of time. Thanks for watching.
great.